One of the biggest questions going on within the Halo community right now is when will infection come to the game? It's something that Halo players have been able to play around with, well, ever since Halo 2 when they created that mode. Though all signs seem to be pointing towards the next season of Halo Infinite, season 4 come around at the end of June. But there seems to be a bit of a twist when it comes to infection this time around. As Halo.API tweeted this image out a while ago that we covered, you can see that this looks like to be like an infection mode, but with a Ratus on his face. That's kind of interesting, right? So they still will be zombies, but more much more of a digital sense and it seems to tie in appropriately with the narrative event that's kind of getting set up for Halo Infinite during season three. I've heard rumors about the second half of the narrative event within season three. Don't want to spoil anything, but just say there's some connections there. It also does seem like there's gonna be a fan classic mode coming back action sack, but not in the way you think. Zach Boyce is one of the lead developers of the multiplayer side of things for Halo Infinite it says, we have a different idea for action sack, particularly when we start getting our hands on wilds that the community is making with Forge. But there seems to be a looming problem coming around with this as well. In a response to Mint, let's talk about the UI limitations Halo Infinite has right now and how they keep removing and adding in different game modes and playlists kind of in a bit of a frustrating way, Michael Shore, who's a leader of the Forge team and also part of the multiplayer design team, said that with 20 playlist entries, there's a 5% chance of seeing a particular experience every time you match make. And with the population that we have right now within Halo Infinite, not exactly thriving, but still there. Makes me wonder which one of these modes has got to go. So let's jump in and see why people are not playing these modes, but we're going to do it in an illegal way with a PlayStation 5 controller from Hex Gaming. Wait! Hex Gaming make these amazing controllers for PlayStation and Xbox. They take the real deal controllers and modify them into something that gamers really want, bringing features like back panels, profiles saved on the controllers themselves, and stick customization. Hex Gaming lets you fully customize your controller with face plates, buttons, trigger pulls, distances, grips, and so much more. I've been playing with Hex Gaming controllers for over a year now at this point, and they've certainly withstood the test of time. If you're interested, check out the link in the pinned comment or in the description of this video. And if you want to save yourself some cash, use my code KevinCoolX at checkout to get 5% off your purchase. Thank you Hex Gaming for being a long time sponsor of the channel, but let's get right back into those details. And to trigger the Xbox purists even more, I got a PlayStation controller UI right down below here so you can kind of see what buttons I'm pressing while playing. Now, believe it or not, Team Snipers is actually one of the lesser played modes within Halo Infinite. I know a lot of people within the community are crying for Snipers to be a permanent mode. Comes in, goes out, people get a little frustrated with it. And I can kind of understand why it's less populated. I think at the time of making that though, they did have what, uh, the brute version of Snipers, which wasn't really that fun. Uh, I'm currently on 165 millisecond ping, so that definitely tells you there might not be a whole lot of people. Oh my God, I'm playing on this controller, guys. I'm much more of a mouse and keyboard player now, and so this feels really weird to play on controller. <laughs> Oh, there we go. Now, the reason why I would even say, like, I oh, was lining this up right here. Oh, shoot, he moved. You weren't supposed to do that. Oh, but you're supposed to do that, though. You definitely were supposed to die. Okay, we got that, at least. Actually, I'm going to do this right here. Take my, so I don't have to take my thumbs off the sticks. Use the grapple from the back button on the controller here and get a no scope. Oh, that was clutch. I love it. I actually got a chance to use the controller for my advantage right there. So yeah, I map one of the back buttons right here to the X button. And so then I can use my grapple shot and all kinds of equipment without taking my thumbs off the sticks. And well, definitely came into advantage right there. But yeah, but why was Team Snipers so underpopulated when it comes to this mode? Because Team Snipers is definitely a highly requested mode. People even want ranked Team Snipers. And I think at the time when they made that population list that there was like the brute version, like I mentioned earlier of Snipers. Oh my God, my aim feels so weird on controlling again. But I also would say that Snipers is also kind of just like a one dimensional type of mode, right? You just have a sniper rifle. But some people seem to really like it. I've been way better with my no scopes than anything else. But me personally, I'm not much of a sniper fan because I think most people who like to jump into Team Snipers are much more uh, like people who like to do montage kind of stuff, which just isn't me, man. I'm just not a montage kid. I mean, also me joining a server with 165 millisecond ping and I'm playing on the weekend as well. That's not gonna lend itself to uh, proper gameplay experiences. There's definitely a sign of the population being low for the, for the mode itself as well. Oh my god! And like I was mentioning earlier in the video with the additions of Infection most likely coming in with Season 4 and the other mode Bastion which is a PvE mode that we've covered previously on the channel here. If you guys like to watch all the videos, well there's your chance. Oh come on, that's not a headshot! Okay, well, at least we got the body. I could see the mode of snipers being kind of just removed completely. 
I don't really see it being that popular. Maybe with the new additions of just like changing it so it's not having that all the brute, weird brute stuff in there could probably help it be more populated. Also, this time around at the time of making this video, it is a featured playlist. So it's at the top of the listings when it comes to matchmaking options. But when Team Cypress comes in, I'm just kind of like, well, I guess. Oh, get out of here, buddy. Oh, get out of here. So let me know in the comment section what you guys would remove from Halo Infinite's playlist options to make room for infection because we all know that the population of Halo Infinite isn't like the best for sure. Oh my God, the church shots are kicking in. So something's kind of have to go, but what would have to go? Would you kick out Team Snipers? Would you kick out Social BTB? Personally, I would actually like to see the removal of an additional ranked playlist just because everything that they do when it comes to that just isn't really that exciting. Unless it's ranked free for all, then you have my attention. But everything else like ranked doubles or I think right now they have ranked survivors in the game, which is kind of, well, real meh that I don't really see it being something that people really want to sit down and play a whole lot grab this and use my back paddle to kind of zoom our way up I love that being able to take not have to take your thumbs off the sticks but also be able to utilize the equipment it's such such a helpful thing with the back paddles on the controller because if you guys haven't tried that out maybe definitely give it a go oh we stake them okay actually what's cute for some ring survivors kind of see if it really is something that needs to be kicked out in my opinion well, we actually found a lobby like right away, even though it says estimated wait time three minutes, we found a match pretty fast. So maybe people are playing this. Are we ranked on Cliffhanger? That's not even a competitive style map, but all right. This is gonna be very interesting to see how ranked experience plays on a non-competitive map. Oh God, we're getting shot across the map from super far away. My aim feels so weird right now. <laughs> It feels so weird to be playing on a PlayStation controller, but it's a really cool experience. Oh, that's a 3v1 right now, buddy. Your days are looking numbered. Actually, I can probably res my teammate here. No! Actually, I feel like there might be some advantages with playing on a PlayStation controller. I think one aspect is definitely the thumbstick positioning feels way different. Because basically on the left side of the, the controller, instead of having the thumbstick on the far left, you have a D-pad on the far left, which is definitely something that... I'm not used to, which I would say it feels a little bit more of a natural movement going from the thumbstick to the D-pad right here. So I can like do like these AI scan stuff a little bit more often because on the Xbox controller, the D-pad's on the lower end of things and it just feels a little awkward trying to reach down for that. That's why I always like try to put my D-pad options on my back paddles on my other hex gaming controller. That's a Xbox style controller just because I want to try to keep my thumbs on the sticks as much as possible. And that's kind of one of the benefits of having control with pounds on the back. Pretty much every pro player does the same thing as well. This guy got the sniper rifle. I'm a little curious what's going on here. Oh God, like right there, I just ended up using the mark option way more naturally. Oh wow, that's another round one for us. Oh, you got snipes. <gasps> no, I don't want to be sniped. There we go, we got him. The cool thing with this controller, right? If I just hit like this, hold down this middle button, Wait for the light to start flashing, and then I can go whatever back button I want to, to whatever button I want to map it to, just hold that down. And now I can just use the back button to mark, which is super nice. I don't take my thumbs off the sticks. So even though I was just talking about the benefits of the D-pad being up in the upper left-hand corner instead of the lower left-hand corner of the controller, I'm still just using the back paddles. Oh no, he smashed my teammate. I smashed you back. I actually haven't really played a whole lot of controller gameplay on Halo recently, just because of ever since like the December update when they added in mouse and keyboard aim assist. And I was like, oh, this actually might be my jam. I know a lot of controller players have felt that like now mouse and keyboard might have too much of an aim assist advantage along with the precision accuracy that you have with mouse and keyboard as well. But I think the thing is that it didn't really make mouse and keyboard overpowered. I think what it really did, is just made it competitive, honestly. Clearly mouse and keyboard was at a disadvantage in Halo. There's something about it that just doesn't really quite play out very well. There's a reason why we saw almost all pro players playing on controller compared to mouse and keyboard. There we go, we get the dub. Oh my God, tactical CTF. Dude, this is something that's gonna be really weird. 343 actually did respond to this online saying that like some people are not fans of objective being thrown into the tactical slayer playlist. I'm actually kind of for it, but let's see how it actually plays out. On a map like Chasm though, tactical slayer, it might be a little uh, slow. There we go, we got one. Oh God, do I even know how to flag juggle with controller? Have I forgotten all these skills that have been ingrained into my memory for the past 20 years? Maybe not, we'll see. Oh my God, get out of the way, dude. 
Oh my god, my aim was so trash. I thought clearing out the spawn might be the good idea, but uh, no. But I will say Tactical Slayer is a great mode if you need to get like a double kill or something. Oh, it's the perfect mode to go into. Super easy to get kills. Just need to aim for the head once. I can't just pull the flag. I need to make sure I can at least get like a kill or two before making a move, but they're just kind of hiding in the back of the spawn. There we go. Teammates making the push though. I believe. See, look at They're just hiding. Teammates are trying to make the right move, but I don't think they know where to go. This is a really quiet fly cap. Do we have people in this lobby right now? Yeah. There we go. Killing spree. Oh, I'll re peek that corner again. I learned from my mistakes. Let's make our own flag run here. All right, I still know how the flag juggle. We got this. Yeah, we got the flag cap. Let's go. I will say when you have an objective on the map, it makes the spawning prediction so much easier to do in SWAT. Sorry, tactical slayer. I don't think these guys are playing. Oh, I think they don't. They just straight up left the game. There's only three of them. Oh, you're hiding in the corner, dude. Just not going to work out in your favor. You got to make sure you land those shots. This guy's just running forward like a bot. I got him too. Kill Frenzy? Oh my goodness. We're cyberbullying at this point now. There we go. Dude, that was the weirdest game of SWAT I've ever played. So playing Halo with a PlayStation controller didn't really feel that weird. I guess it's the benefits of playing on PC. You got options. Make sure to check the link in the pinned comment for my affiliate link to get yourself some savings if you guys want to pick up a controller for Xbox or PlayStation. I'll catch you on the next one. Peace out.